We actually have a special guest here today to also welcome you, um, and that is um, the Mayor of Los Angeles, Yay. Eric Garcetti. Hi. Eric. He's a fourth generation Angelino, just like me. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was recently elected um, in a pretty hotly contested contested race. And uh, one of the things that that uh, you know we in the tech community have really appreciated is <coughs> Eric's really focused a lot on technology in the LA area and supporting tech and really seeing it as a growth industry. And you know, technology requires. A lot of infrastructure, and so we're really, really excited to um, to have you in the hot seat, and uh, looking forward to hear, having you have say a few words. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, so, for all of you who are developers, this is called the morning, and this is called a tie. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a culture shock, so I just want to throw that out there. Thank you, Simon, so much for inviting me to the first DreamCon. Um, uh, when I got the invitation, I wasn't sure what DreamCon was. It sounded like maybe Ocean's Eleven or something, you know, criminal. But then when I realized that it was a conference and it was talking about tech here in LA, I got very excited to be here on what is just my fourth week uh, in office as mayor. And you are right now um, participating in something that is connected to the best platform on the face of the earth. And I'm not talking about DreamHost, that's probably the second best. I'm talking about Los Angeles, which is in so many ways, if you measure by diversity, if you measure by our economy, if you measure by our weather, if you measure by our history, it's the most extraordinary platform, I believe, anywhere on the face of the earth right now. If you just take some standard measures, it's probably the most diverse collection of human beings that's ever been put in one spot, ever. Over 220 languages are spoken here. Wow. Over 144 countries of origin here. Over 37 countries find their largest population outside the home country here. Not sure if it's that for Aussies, but you know, there's 37 countries. It could be though. Um, we have the kind of saying that I've been playing with that if you're not lucky enough to be from Los Angeles or live in Los Angeles, this is the world's second home. You can be here for 15 minutes coming off a plane from Israel or from wherever and in moments be someplace that looks familiar, that sounds familiar, that smells familiar, that tastes familiar. Or you can be like me, a fourth generation Angelino, and go 15 minutes in a new direction and find a pocket of something completely unexplored, completely unknown, that is brand new to you. There's few places in the world that you can have both of that completely familiar and unfamiliar, that expected and that unexpected. But we've also always defined ourselves as a place where there's innovation which is why I'm so pleased that Dream Host is here, part of a tech revolution, explosion that's happening in Los Angeles, which isn't brand new, by the way. Los Angeles probably has the best tech creds of any city in the United States. You know, this, this could be my Al Gore moment. I had no role, but email was invented here <laughs> in Los Angeles. We, you know, put a rover on Mars. We uh, have more patents that come out of our collective universities here, graduate more engineers than the Bay Area. We do things here, not just in the tech space of digital information technology, but across the tech spectrum that have changed the world, literally, sometimes even our solar system. Ways that we have looked at continually reinventing ourselves, even in the tough times like the recession that we're emerging from right now. And I squarely think that tech is poised to help lead us out of the recession here and to help Los Angeles lead this country and to help the world right now, which is still sputtering, um, get back on track. And I think we can't do it without Los Angeles, and I hope as mayor to be kind of the embodiment of a new sort of high-tech mayor. Not just in the way that I relate to constituents, but the way that we build city government. You know, we have cutting-edge technology in the city of Los Angeles. Unfortunately, it's from 1988. And we have, you know, people who are still thinking in old systems and old ways, as we've seen the transformation of our lives, how we communicate, how we purchase things, how we interact with one another, changing in every other sector, government has lagged so far behind. And in those moments when we can change it, we've seen the same things that you all know, the payoff, whether it's return on investment in, in dollars, whether it's better connections with our constituents, or whether it's the way that we can jumpstart our economy. I'll give you three quick examples. I remember when, when you know, blogs were starting and they were this curious thing out there. I was a council member for the last 12 years representing the, the heart of the city, kind of Hollywood, Silver Lake, Echo Park, an area which 
gets a lot of attention as being really revived and hip and all those sorts of things, but people don't realize about 12 years ago, of the 15 city council districts in LA, it was the third poorest in terms of per capita income. It was actually poorer than two of the three districts that are in South Los Angeles. It was poorer than the district that is in East Los Angeles. The per capita income was about $22,000 per person. But we focused on how do we build up you know, something that is better, that looks at the content, not just of you know, digital content, but the street level content of a good coffee house, of a decent place to walk, of a safe neighborhood. And so, you know, as blogs started to come about, it was one of the first areas where people were creating neighborhood-based blogs, where they were talking about life in Silver Lake or in Echo Park. And I remember one day reading one, and somebody in the comments section said, I've written Eric Garcetti's office about a problem I have with a stop sign or something, and I haven't heard back. Totally sucks. Government, you know, typical. And um, I got into the comments section to my staff's uh, you know, dismay and said, when did you send us you know, the, the information? He's like, it was a day and a half ago and I haven't heard back. And I said, well, you know, we usually get that. We'll write a letter and it takes you know, three or four days to turn around. But by the way, here's the things you can do to solve your problem. And um, here's the staff member who'll be working on it. Send us an email, we'll connect you, et cetera. And then it was like 48 comments in a row, like awesome, rad, best council member ever, totally cool, blah, blah, blah. And I'd gone from you know just this embodiment of typical, slow, cynical government to, wow, it's a new day. And when I tell that story to folks, what the information was, was no different than what we would have done if somebody showed up at our office or had written us, you know, um, with paper post or if somebody had picked up the phone and called us. The content